Anthony Marchese is the chairman of Texas Mineral Resources. Welcome to the Investor Intel studio, Anthony. Good afternoon once again, Fred. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Um, I think it's pretty well understood by our readers that rare earth elements are uh, controlled to some considerable degree in China and that therefore there are some concerns uh, in various quadrants about supply and security of supply, particularly of the heavy rare earth elements. Your last news release uh, made mention of some work done with the U.S. Department of Defense. Perhaps you could touch briefly on the importance of that. Well, as the, thank you, Fred, uh, so as the last press release uh, described, we were successful in completing a contract for the Defense Logistics Agency um, in the purification of certain uh, minerals, in some cases to what they call five nines, 99.999, from minerals sourced uh, from our deposit at the in, in Texas near El Paso, around Tom Mountain. Now, you, you've, you've, the story has been your Ron Top Mountain project, but in other recent releases, you've talked about different things, including this, this technology that's deployed to get the purity that the Defense Department wants, but you've also been looking at coal. Um, so, another new element to the story. Tell us about that. Well, we, we'd like to think of Texas Mineral Resources, and hence the name change from Texas Rare Earth Resources back in uh, December. We'd like to think of ourselves as having many uh, legs to the stool. Clearly, our round top project uh, is still active, started out as our principal project, but we see tremendous opportunity in minerals that are not necessarily China dependent, scandium being one of them. Uh, through our work uh, with some research done by the Department of Energy, we were able to uh, come across some very interesting deposits in Pennsylvania uh, from coal, which are um, rich in scandium. We think that's a win for everyone. The coal industry has been under a lot of pressure, so I think this is fantastic for the coal industry. It's fantastic for Texas Mineral Resource shareholders, uh, and it's fantastic because scandium is a mineral which is of interest in the United States and in every continent. So what, what needs to be done to realize uh, the economics of the scandium in coal? Well, we've signed a, an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, with this particular coal company that's been around in Pennsylvania since the 1920s. We have six months in which to do some due diligence in terms of the uh, economic feasibility of recovering the scandium from two types of um, uh, sources. One, and the, what they call the overburden. When you dig for coal, there's an overburden that has scandium in it, as well as uh, fly ash. This particular company provides coal to the local utilities, as well as takes back the fly ash once the coal has been used in the boiler. So that material that comes back also has um, a scan given it, not to the extent that the overburden does, but you'd also be looking at significantly lower costs to uh, process. As our um, press release uh, described, we believe that based on preliminary, internal, detailed economic analysis, that both sources of scandium would potentially provide extremely uh, lucrative returns to not only the owners of the coal uh, company, as well as to Texas Mineral Resource shareholders. Coming back to Round Top Mountain in Texas, uh, you've done a preliminary economic study that suggests that the capex for that project would be substantially lower than some of the other heavy rare earth element deposits that are known in North America, which have proven to be unfinanceable in current circumstances. What's happening at Round Top Mountain? Well, since we did our PEA uh, in December uh, several years ago, uh, a number of things have happened. Number one, the PEA was based on a processing methodology called solvent extraction. We subsequently formed a uh, 
partnership, joint venture with uh, KTEX, so we would be processing this material using uh, continuous ion exchange, continuous ion uh, chromatography. We believe that uh, on an internal uh, analysis that the project would have come, in today's terms, would have come down from about 292 million uh, to about 250 million. I agree with you, this is substantially lower than anything in North America and frankly um, places us among the lowest capex in the world. The problem you have right now, and by the way, even at today, we believe that uh, based on, again, internal analysis using uh, Chinese uh, pricing that we would still be profitable at today's level. We believe right now the market for uh, rare earth projects um, is you know, on hold. Uh, our pro and we believe it's only a question of time until the world recognizes that in fact the United States needs to uh, advance uh, projects such as ours. So we are in the process of continuously talking to interested parties, but I believe until rare earth prices improve uh, worldwide, I think the perception, not the reality, but the perception is that the rare earth market is on hold. I think that's a big mistake strategically, and I think the contract that we have with the DLA and the GAO report that came out recently in Congress is a testament to the fact that the right people are in fact caring about the rare earth market. Well, it sounds like the news is, is going exactly in that direction. Uh, Anthony, thank you very much. We look forward to uh, watching your news over the next six months. Thank you very much, Brett. Great.